social insects, working together, build the most incredible structures. But often, these feats of engineering are hidden from our view. It takes a bit of ingenuity to reveal their amazing architecture. In the depths of Florida's Apalachicola National Forest, Walter Chinkle has come up with one way of showing what ants get up to deep below the ground. Most people understand that ants live in colonies, but what they fail to see is that the colony acts like an organism. It's an organism of organisms, where the pieces are the workers and the queen and the larvae and the brood. And the goal of each ant colony is to produce more ant colonies. So that superorganism, as we call it, then builds the architecture of the underground nest. As ant colonies grow, they abandon their old nests to build new ones close by. This old nest entrance would have been easy to miss in the undergrowth. But not for a world-renowned ant scientist. To reveal the underground workings first takes a bit of preparation, a little tidying up, then a low sand wall around the hole. Now, time to light the portable furnace. Not to keep warm, this is Florida after all. The furnace soon reaches an extremely high temperature, hot enough to melt aluminum, which Walter can then pour into the abandoned nest. Aluminum melts at 650 degrees centigrade, but in order to get it to flow further, I heat it way hotter than that, usually to a bright orange color. It takes a whole lot of practice to get this just right. And to avoid burning the whole place down. It's draining in there. The best way to expose it is to dig a pit to one side and then go in from the side and gradually free the cast. So that's what we're going to do now. This is the work of Fidoli Morrisai, an ant known for building very deep nests. So it's hot, hard work to reveal the intricate clusters of chambers. Different species build different structures. But all ant cities have the same basic pattern. The chamber shapes change and the shaft connections may be different. The spacing may be different. But they all follow the same theme. Even so, Walter can tell which species made which nests. This is a unique characteristic of the Florida harvester ant, that the, the, the chambers are connected by a, a helical tunnel, which is very wide at the top and gets narrower at the bottom because there's less traffic, so it's like an eight-lane highway being condensed down to a four-lane highway. It's like building a whole new neighborhood, complete with infrastructure, every time you want to move house, and doing it very quickly. What is really impressive about these nests is that the entire nest, and it could be six, eight, ten feet deep, is built within four or to six days by the ants. 
all you see is a disk of dirt and you have no idea what's underneath. It's a really a thing of beauty. In my view, it qualifies as art. It's got the same kind of interest and beauty that a sculpture would have. And it's made by ants. And it's made completely in the dark, without a blueprint and without a leader. It's one thing to excavate a nest long abandoned. What happens inside a thriving nest, still full of busy insects? Bumblebees often build their nests in old mouse burrows. Not the easiest places to film. But we had a plan. Okay. Bumblebee colonies are sold commercially for pollinating greenhouse crops. So now, all we needed was a set that worked both for us and the bees. This was going to be the most luxurious mouse hole a bee could ever wish for. Foam lined for insulation with easy access to the outside world. Custom built to accommodate their existing nest. What I'm doing now is cutting a hole in the base of our bee box so that we can fit this little bed that the bumblebees arrive in. So they fit nicely into our box and feel like home. Now, a layer of cement to protect the foam insulation from hundreds of sharp mandibles. It's just going on top of the foam that prevents the bees from chewing through and destroying our set over the next three months. Then finally, a coating of good old-fashioned mud mixed with PVA glue to help it set faster. A few finishing touches for realism. Now all we had to do was move the bee colony into its new home. Their nest is always in darkness, just how the bees like it. So expose it to light at your peril. We can see red light, and bees can't, which helped, but not much. Lots of angry bees that needed a helping hand to get back home. Set up with everything they needed, the bees thrived. Allowing us to follow the story of a bee and her colony through an entire summer. It takes a lot of effort and ingenuity to reveal the secret lives of social insects. But it's more than worth it. It's a huge privilege to share their lives through a whole season. To watch how they communicate and how they work together to build sophisticated societies. And to understand how they've become the most amazing of all the inhabitants of Planet Insect. Mm -hmm.